What is good, everybody? Today, we are back with another My Damn Thoughts episode. Today, we are going to be ranking WWE Elite Series 108, and that is pretty much what My Damn Thoughts is. We take a WWE figure set, an AEW Unrivaled set, we take it through, we run it through the ringer right here, and we figure out where this set stands. I give you all of my thoughts. We break down the best and worst of the set and give all of our thoughts and opinions on this wave. Now, I typically do start off with my first thoughts and my first thoughts on this wave, man, were super bland. And I'll give you the rundown on all these mother efforts right here, man. I'll break it all down for you, Brad. I was not hyped for this set whatsoever and I'll get into that, man. Starting out with LA Knight right here. I didn't like the formula. I didn't like the head sculpt. I really didn't even care for the gear. And so, I mean, that right there for his first, I mean, his basic head sculpt was better than his elite. So that gives me, you know, right off the bat, it's not starting off hot. Also, if you missed our individual reviews on all these figures, man, definitely go check those out on the channel. But this Brock Lesnar, man, he's got the damn honeycomb mouth. And then from the neck down, he's pretty much every Brock Lesnar we've seen in elite form over the last two years. So considering all those things, man, it just, I, it didn't move the needle for me. You get a cowboy hat and a damn denim vest, I just wasn't having it. This Bronson Reed figure, essentially just a repaint of his Elite 90 figure that arguably had a better gear. Not a ton going on here. You did get some updated tattoos, but I mean, that's, the, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. I thought, oh, Moss's Elite 97 figure was essentially perfect. I didn't think it needed an upgrade, but they did do some things with this figure that shocked the hell out of me. But I'm again, we're going off my first thoughts on these figures. Chelsea Green, I still feel like they kind of dropped the ball in her head sculpt, but that was my initial thought. I was like, damn, that figure. I was hyped for Chelsea Green, and now my head sculpt I don't really like. And then I was worried she wasn't going to have boot cut, but thank God they did give her boot cut. And then last but not least, we do have Terry Gordy. Now starting off, you know, I didn't grow up watching Terry Gordy or something like that, man, all right? You're not going to find him on my top 10 favorite of all time, but he was the only only figure in the set where I was like, okay, we got something cooking right here. So that was my initial thoughts on the wave. I was very worried about this set coming into it. And I, I feel like based on viewership of the reviews, not that many people were that hyped for this wave in general. But I don't know, you guys can sound off down in the comment section below, but let's dive into the shelf warmer in the set. And this one's not that difficult. I do feel that we all know that women's figures tend to shelf warm more than men's figures for the most part. So I do think that Chelsea Green's figure is going to be the shelf warmer in the set, even though I could see some of these other figures maybe hanging around longer than previous. I do think, however, that Chelsea Green is going to be the one that uh, shelf warms the most. Her her basic figure hung around my Walmart for a little while there, but I know a lot of people out there that collect are going to be hyped to find Chelsea Green, but I guess it's going to depend on how many there are per case and things like this, because Roxanne Perez has been gone from shelves, and that is because I think she's only one per box or one per shipment, so there's that. So maybe that'll be a case there with the Chelsea Green figure. And then the hottest figure in the set for my damn thoughts is going to be LA Knight, man. I mean, of course, you do have a first time in the line elite figure for LA Knight, but also Terry Gordy, I think, could also make some noise on the shelves because, you know, a lot of flashback collectors, a lot of people that don't collect modern day are going to search that figure out. I think it has so many unique things going on with it that people are going to want it. But the LA Knight figure, I think, is going to be super hot. I mean, people love LA Knight. He's super over. They see him on the pegs in elite form. He's gone, man. I mean, think about his basic figures. It was tough to find his basic. You look at the aftermarket on his basic figure. It's easy easily going to be LA Knight. We've seen 100 Brocks. We've seen Omos before. We've seen Bronson Reed. Again, Terry Gordy and Chelsea Green are what they are, but the LA Knight figure, I think for the most part, will be the hottest in the set when it hits the retail shelves. Now, as far as Chase figures are, we do have the Chelsea Green here. Now, I will say that Chase is much better than the regular edition to me. I think that that, I don't think it's accurate. I don't think they quite captured what that, you know, what that attire actually looks like. But at the same time, this figure isn't as good as that Chase. I like that Chase attire much better than this, and I definitely got to track that down. That is something that is a goal of mine this year is to track down that Chelsea Green chase. But the chase is Chelsea Green, and it's a nice chase figure. And I'm pretty sure she was the chase in the basics. So every set that she's been in so far, she's been the chase figure. Next up, we have best head sculpt. Now, this actually is kind of crazy because the two people that could have had new head sculpts or a reuse head sculpt in LA Knight, I'm speaking of, their head sculpts were not good. LA Knight, not a good head sculpt. Chelsea Green, not the best head sculpt. Bronson Reed's a redo. That Brock Lesnar's a redo. That Omaha's figure is a redo head sculpt. Not that they're not good in their own ways. Bronson Reed's is great. Omos's is great. It's almost perfect, pretty much. I wouldn't have a single gripe about that Omos head sculpt, but Terry Gordy, he's getting the best head sculpt, man. I like this head sculpt a lot, not to mention just the regular Terry Gordy, but you gotta give a shout to the Executioner head sculpt. I give a huge shout. He's getting both of them, man. I like that they have the, uh, you know, the, the visor or the mask floating down over the neck. I think that's sweet as hell. I think that looks so good. It goes on the figure well. Very good execution of the Executioner head sculpt and the regular Terry Gordy long hair. I like 
like both of them, and they're easily the best head sculpts to me. I mean, I know I try to give it to, if it's a repeat head sculpt like we saw with Bronson Reed or Omos, I tend to not like it. I don't like the damn honeycomb mouth Brock Lesnar. So these are the, they, these are definitely walking away with the best head sculpts of the Elite 108 set. Now we're getting into the best articulation of the set. Now you do have some figures here that can move around pretty damn well, I might add. Most of these people are on ball joints that move around well. And I will say, Terry Gordy didn't get the best articulation, but he moves damn well to be a guy that's not on ball joints. And the guy that I'm actually Actually giving this to isn't on ball joints either, man. I'm going with the LA Knight figure. I feel that usually what goes into this is which figure would I have the most fun posing around and putting on a matchup with in a pick fed scenario, and that would be this LA Knight. I think that look at that kick forward right there. It's almost perfect toe kick. It's almost a 90 degree angle right there. Not that you need the splits for real, but he can still do the splits. You get the upper thigh cut. None of it's loose. He's not in pinless legs. He doesn't have pinless legs, so his knees aren't super tight. You get the boots swivel you get buttery smooth arms here no tightness that go all the way down that's money he he feels the best in hand i would say or at least he's up there man he is a great figure in terms of posability and feel in hand i just don't care for the formula or the head sculpt and that definitely docks the figure in my opinion which we'll get into in the ranking set we are going to rank this set at the very end so definitely hold tight and stay tuned as we break down the set some more we're getting into the worst articulation and you might think to yourself oh it's going to be chelsea green but no, Brad, it is actually not going to be Chelsea Green. It is going to be none other than Bronson Reed. Now, this may shock you because he's on ball joints, and he actually feels quite good in hand, but in terms of doing a matchup with this guy, I don't think it would be that fun, man. When you have gigantic guys like this, or massive guys like this, it would be incredibly hard to get him in a German suplex. You know, he's got these elbow pads on here. He's got these large knee pads. He would be the least fun, I think, to pose around for that, for that reason. And, you know, you could say, oh, you could just take the elbow pads off. You could take the knee pads off. And while that's true, you're still not going to be able to German suplex somebody really easily. And that's that doesn't hold all the weight in the conversation. But for me personally, I just, I don't know. I just would not want to post him around that much. And it's not necessarily his fault there, but that's just the that's just the way it is here in this. The rest of these figures can pose around pretty damn well. And not that Bronson can't. He's just the worst of the set when it comes to posability. And next up, man, we are getting into our best accessory. And this one's actually quite easy, I think. You know, we did have some cool things here and there, but at the end of the day, this one has to go to Terry Gordy and his entrance robe, man. This executioner entrance robe is unbelievable, man. This thing's straight. Look at that. I can pretty much cover all these people with this robe or this cape. It is insane, man. He's got the hood in there. It looks like a druid or something. I feel like people should put this on Danhausen or something for a, a really cool fix-up or something. It may drape over him, but at the same time, it's cool. I like the hood. I like the points. Everything. Very good craftsmanship on here. We, see, we saw something very similar with the cape from the Legends Hulk Hogan from Series 21, I think it was. This is great stuff, man. They did a really good job. And not to mention the singlet or the overall style deal here. I think it's pretty much just a cloth singlet here. This is actually really good as well, and it looks really good on the figure, so it's easily this cape, man. This cape druid robe for the executioner is fantastic. But now that we've run through all of our categories, man, it's time to pull these guys off screen and rank this set from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Now, before we rank the set, we do have to get into the criteria for the ranking, and this just comes down to a few different things, man, if you're new here. Five or six points that we judge these figures on. First of all, excitement level for the figure. How hype was I for the figure? was I super excited for it as a character that I really enjoy and you know do I hold do I hold some sort of attachment to the character and things of that nature number two is going to be execution of details these aren't in any order I'm just naming them off you know execution of details did they implement something new is it executed really well not just details but execution of those details number three likeness to the character on my television does it look like the character does it remind me of the character do I look at this figure and think damn that looks like he just shrunk down Randy Orton right here in my house you know what I mean so that's that's another part of it. Feel in hand and articulation, head sculpt and likeness. Accessories can also play a bit in the conversation as well. So just all those things, man. And just because a figure comes in at the bottom doesn't mean it's the worst figure of all time and I don't like it in any capacity. And just because a figure's number one does not mean that it's without any faults whatsoever and the greatest figure to ever touch grass. I don't know why you're touching grass, but you know what I mean. But with all those things being said, man, number six is going to be Honeycomb Mouth himself, Brock Lesnar. We've stated it before. I don't like the head sculpt. I think it looks odd with 
with the mouth wide open, and it looks almost like every Brock Lesnar we've got for the last two years outside of the Ultimate Edition, which is what you should try down. I wouldn't buy this figure at the slightest if I were you. I wouldn't even look at it. Unless you like honeycomb mouth Brock Lesnar, I would avoid this figure completely. He won't even stand now. Damn pinless legs make me want to vomit. Coming into the number five spot, man, it was tough. It was really, this was actually one of the toughest sets that I've ever had to rank here in my damn thoughts, but I'm going with Chelsea Green, man. Chelsea Green, you know, she's a great figure. I actually do like it. Her legs are a bit loose. I don't like how loose the feet are. She kind of, yeah, right there. She wants to fall over a lot. I don't care for the head sculpt that much, but I do like Chelsea Green, and the head sculpt has grown on me a little bit, but it's still not my favorite. I just, I didn't think she was as good as some other figures here in the Elite Series 108, but I, I enjoy the figure. I've had fun posing it around. But at the end of the day, she comes in at number five. Number four may shock some people, man, but I'm going with L.A. Knight. I like L.A. Knight, but I don't like this head sculpt for him. It's not as egregious as I once thought it was. However, I think that his basic figure is much better in terms of the head sculpt. I don't care for the formula. I think the legs should be completely different. I would have went with a different torso, too. Not that this torso bothers me that much, but I still would have changed it. I wouldn't go with what they gave us here. So I went with L.A. Knight at the number four spot. Number three is going to be the Omos figure. Now, coming in, man, I would have thought this figure would be low on the list because I thought it was just a repaint of his Elite 97, but we covered this in our review, man. They actually gave him a brand new arm mold that elongated the bicep and made the figure top notch. It really did. I, it, If you didn't watch the full review, we go into the lore of it, but this is a brand new arm mold. They extended the arms, made them more accurate. I like the new boot sculpt and stuff. Feels really good in hand and looks just like the character on my TV. I'm not a big Omos guy, but Jesus, they, they executed the hell out of that figure. Now we're down to number two and number one, man, and for me personally, at number two, I went with Bron Bronson Reed. I think it's a really great execution of him. I think the Elite 90 version of Bronson was fantastic, and I'm pretty sure it came in at the top two or three of his set as well. It's pretty much perfect to, to no avail. I mean, it really is perfect to, for the most part. I mean, I really don't have any gripes about it. The only gripes I have is that it's essentially the Elite 90 repainted, and it does have the entrance duster, but I prefer the Elite 90, and I don't think they gave us... I think a screaming head sculpt would have done wonders for this figure and stuff, but at the end of the day, he is number two for me, and uh, it pretty much comes down to which figure what I want out of the entire set coming in at number one and number one for me is going to be Terry Gordy yeah shock the hell out of me man shock the hell out of me and you know essentially this figure is two and one so you, you get you know a lot of bang for your buck you're paying for one figure but you get two because you can do you can dress him up in the whole executioner gimmick he's got the singlet he comes with a cloak he comes with the damn sight he comes with the executioner head sculpt I mean he is essentially a full two in one figure and he feels good in hand and poses around nice the only gripe I have is that the arms are too small I would have we really need that fatter arm mold that I keep talking about, man. They need one that's somewhere between this and this that's not quite massive like these, but it's not super skinny like this. Guys like Kevin Owens, Mankind, things like that, you gotta have an arm mold for guys like that. So that's just where I stand. But that is my damn thoughts on WWE Elite Series 108, man. Very hyped for WWE Elite 109. I imagine that we're gonna see this stuff. Now, I am recording this on Monday of the WrestleMania week, and the time I'm posting this, the next day will be WWE World. So at the time you're seeing this, tomorrow we're getting figure reveals. But for me, it's like three days away. But I'll be in Philly and I'll be there to cover it all and wrap it up on the channel, making different content for you guys so you guys can be on the lookout. We're going to do the walkthrough and all the different things. And I can't have them wait, man. But hopefully Elite 109 and all the reveals we get are outstanding. But we will not know until we get there, man. But I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support. You guys are absolutely incredible. Thank you guys so very much for all that you do. But I am getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>